The question is, baby, which one do we take? They can both haul. Well, it drives like a Cadillac. Well, it drives like a Cadillac, so which one? This one. <laughs> to go trailer shopping? Yep. Do they even know what we're doing? No. I mean, do we want to take this? Why not? I guess that's true. It pulls the trailer better than the trailer. Yeah, I guess it does work. Yeah, actually, we should probably take this one. I'm sorry, baby. I know. It's not as comfortable as a Cadillac, but it does serve the purpose better. Yeah, it does need clean. It, uh, it's been my daily, and I don't know. I keep it. Boys have been in here. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another video here on Loud and Proud. So today we are actually going to be hopefully trailer shopping. Well, we are going to trailer shop. I don't know if we're going to buy a trailer today or not. We might because there's a truck we might go pick up for her, and I also want to have a trailer to be able to haul my dad's tractor over if I need to rent it off him for the day. We always just need a trailer for that we don't have a trailer for. So like, I rented one for a couple days, and it was like a couple hundred bucks for just three days of rental. I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, if I have to rent a trailer every time that she can't come with me, I could basically buy a trailer by the end of the year almost so I'm like okay we should just look for a good car hauler style trailer like I'm guessing a 20 footer we're gonna go over to the barn actually gonna make sure you don't forget we gotta go over to the barn take some measurements of the width of a lot of our trucks and kind of see like a general width of what we need in terms of deck surface width just to make sure there's no like trailer you know fenders in the way or something like that to where a truck can't fit in between I think most of them a standard is 82 inches wide it just depends on if you find one that has the wheel wells like above the deck or if the wheels are below the deck to where then you have more width you know available I don't know so uh, anyways we're gonna go look at some trailers we got to go take some measurements of some of the trucks to kind of get an idea of how wide they are and then hopefully we can go and pick the trailer today got some goods here we've also got two by tens two by ten by twelves let me show you what the what the plan is that I have in mind my main goal for a pulley slash hoist hey there buddy he's right there by my face anyways my main goal for a uh, chain hoist system is essentially to just use it to lift truck beds off when we need to and they're not just gonna hang suspended up there for a long period of time basically like lift a bed off put the bed back so what I'm trying to think in terms of how I want to do it is probably just run the uh, 2 by 10 by 12s from this post to over top of that post you know, and run like the mass of the post on the downside and just have the top part of the post flush with the top of that beam there that runs across here side to side. And then basically so that the reason I did tens is so that we can basically run bolts through not only the part of the rafter in various points for contact points to fasten, you know, where those two separate boards connect from here to there and from there to there. They can be bolted together all the way across. Not only that, but then when we get to here, we can run also some bolts through the 2x10 through the post directly on the bottom half of the 2x10 on both sides. That way, you know, not only is it fastened to reinforce that main part of the beam and structure, but it's also going to be making it to where when weight is applied to that, weight is also being applied directly to the post on this side and that side to try to take some load off of the actual rafter itself. So I think it's gonna work out fine. Are there other ways to do things? Of course there are, and am I a contractor or a construction professional? Absolutely not. I'm just kinda like taking advice from people that have done various things very similar to this, and I'm like, okay, that sounds like a pretty good idea, and I think that would work. We're going to attempt to fasten up at least one of these boards right now. Keep an eye on me. Let me know if you think I'm gonna fall. It's only mess and I'm not gonna be able to hear you guys. Let's see if we can get her up. No, I'm not done with it, but I at least got it hung up with some four inch screws. I tried to put one in the post here and that one didn't hit the post. Of course it was way off, but I was just like trying to balance and keep the board up and get at least a screw in so that it would hold itself. But the goal with this babe is gonna be to drill some holes through the posts so that 
like this beam going across is fastened to the beam as well to keep it centered. But when it's weight bearing down on it, that hopefully it'll go directly and balance it between the rafter and the actual post on each side, not just the rafter. So it'll be pretty cool. I'm not sure what else to do with this right now. Run into a little bit of a dilemma. And let me show you what that dilemma is. So because you can see there's a little tiny gap between that two by 10 and the post, because that's not just a little bit shy of being flush, my five inch bolts are not going to reach through. Like basically the end of the bolt just touches the back side of the post. Um, so I'm gonna have to get longer bolts. And that's kind of unfortunate because I was hoping to get this done today. But so that's the progress. So I did get one bolt ran on the back side there and then I kind of sandwiched it with a two by four in the back just to get at least one big heavy duty bolt in there to hold that board in place. The four inch screws are probably just totally fine, but I just thought I'd get that one ran. But I do want to get some little bit longer. I'm probably gonna have to get five and a halves, maybe sixes, but probably like five and a halves to fully run it through there. And I might go with a little bit heavier bolt too now that I'm thinking about it. So I might do that for that. And then on this side, it needs pulled in some too. You can see how that post is properly notched. But, um, the beam doesn't quite set in there as far over as it could go. I'm gonna get some longer, you know, bolts. That way I can actually pull that two by 10, the rafter and that post and pull them all together. And the other thing I'm gonna need that I didn't even think about was a longer enough drill bit to do that. I was like, oh, I got the bolts and I got the, you know, the board and whatever. Well, I need to get a long enough dr uh, drill bit to actually drill all the way through. Same with even this one. I don't even have a drill bit long enough to go through that, which I didn't even think about. I don't know why I didn't think about that. So just a couple of things that slowed us down. And another thing I was thinking about, I'm like, okay, this is a great idea. I have the beam there, I have the beam behind me, that way I can fasten the two by 10 and bolt it through the rafter, but into the post on each side so that the posts are taking the weight. Well, you remember the conversation of me talking about how we're getting rid of this post? Doesn't look like we're gonna be getting <laughs> rid of the post anytime soon. It like It is in the way, but you can get a truck, even if this was the 7.3 with the long bed and the four door, you could back a truck straight in and it's still enough room to get around it. If you had to back it in at an angle, especially, and you know, back it in over to there with the door. I mean, you still have plenty of room to get around your trucks. Just right now we're in the process of working on the shop, which we gotta do more of here soon. Hopefully in the next couple of days we get more knocked out. But we gotta work on the shop, get rid of some OSB, some steel. We gotta buy more steel to finish it. We gotta do the concrete. We got a bunch of parts in here. We gotta get all of this crap cleaned out once the shop's done as well. There's just so much to do, but when that's all done, there will be enough room on this side of the shop in here to where like, for example, the first gen, whether it be this one or the other one or whatever, you can easily back in here and swing it back and put a truck back around that post without hitting it and back it on up into there too if you're just trying to get it, you know, hide it in the shop. It's inconvenient, I'll give you that much. You can do it, you can make it work, it's just, you're just gonna have to be careful. And you're probably wondering, well, what happened to the whole buying a trailer today thing? Well, I don't know, I still might go do it, I'm not sure. I mean, you might find out in this video if I decide to go do it. I'm like, I'm like procrastinating on executing the decision. I'm one of those people that just cause I can afford something doesn't mean I impulse and buy it. There's a lot of people that like, if they make good money all of a sudden and they're not used to it, they just spend, 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 and they look like a big baller. Like, I'm not that guy. Like, I'll do things like get Reagan a nice vehicle to drive or whatever, but I won't just go like buy myself a bunch of crazy stuff just because I just hesitate when I know all the big goals that I have for like financial freedom and stuff, like through investing and real estate and all that other stuff. Like every time I think about spending money on something, I'm just like, but do we have to have it? You know what I mean? Like, can we make it work without it? Now that we're both gonna be doing truck giveaways, will it make more sense? Cause we're gonna be having to haul two, sometimes three trucks a month that we no longer have to drive two vehicles back when we make trips. And that adds up a lot. I mean, just in diesel, now that I'm thinking about it, it adds up over the year, you know what I mean? Like having to drive two vehicles all the time when you're going to pick up trucks or pick up stuff from paint or going to pick up a truck a couple hours away or out of state like it gets kind of tiring and the other thing i'm thinking about too and this was the biggest i guess you could say 
factor for me is I'm thinking like, okay, we do have a baby on the way within the next like two and a half months. I really don't see Reagan wanting to have to drive separate and go and pick up trucks with me all the time and she's gonna have to then she's driving separate not with me like if something were to happen to their vehicle or I'm ahead of them or whatever she can't get a hold of me just dumb stuff it's like okay that makes me want the trailer so we can all just stay together as a unit drive there together pick trucks up together drive home together like stay together it's one of those things we don't need it we can make it work I can rent trailers all the time and crap like that because we're gonna have to do a lot of hauling coming up here soon or does that just like not make sense when you could just buy one and then never have to worry about driving two vehicles back and never have to worry about running trailers for the rest of your life. I would say the investment long term would definitely be worth it. We also worked on a little thing for Reagan here and not anything too crazy. It's a temporary, I guess you could say patent pending type of deal. Not for him, but uh, well kind of for him, mostly for her, but to haul manure. I actually got one of the carts that they had left here and I stacked a couple two by fours. Fastening them together to make them basically the diameter of a four by four post. And then what I ended up doing was putting a little hook on the trailer on the end of it and making a makeshift tongue for this trailer to hook onto the back of the mower. And as you can see, Reagan's been hauling manure back and forth to dump it. Anyways, now that it's hooked back on, here was the concept just to get her by for the day or two until we actually build one that doesn't fall off, right? All right? So it was just a basic utility hook for like hanging lights and crap, and I just like threaded it down in there, which it only goes in like an inch and a half, and then it just like would hook on here. And then I just told her, you know, keep the weight towards the back, except for like a little bit in the front to keep the a little bit of tongue weight so the hook doesn't come off when you're driving up the hill. But other than that, that was the basic idea for the day. I kind of talked myself into it. We're gonna go get a trailer. I thought of this idea for months. I just kind of kept pushing it off because I kept telling myself it'd be a good idea to have one. And then I, if I didn't haul anything for a few weeks, I was like, no, I don't need one. But then if I did start hauling stuff again for a couple weeks straight, I'm like, well, I wish I had one. You know how it goes. Let's just do it. Let's stop procrastinating get a 20 foot car hauler and uh, we'll make it work. Now, the, I do have a solution that I think would work pretty well for the whole, you know, wheel well thing being an issue and I think I have an idea that'll resolve that. Oh, babe, we need one of those, don't we? Tractor, right? Tractor, yeah. What about one of these, backhoe, huh? So we're gonna go get a trailer. What are your thoughts on the trailer, babe? Like, wh like thoughts. what are your thoughts on us getting a trailer? So most of the time when we pick up vehicles, or it's we have to ride separately, and it's kind of, if not, it's long distance, it's kind of annoying. Yeah, not most of the time, every time. Every time. Yeah. And <laughs> when we go to drop off vehicles for paint, I have to go with Malachi, or if we drop them off or at the mechan or mechanic shop, we have to both go, we both have to like, pause our days basically and it's like so if I need to do something I'm not afraid to you know do a bumper pull but if it was a gooseneck that would be a different story we can definitely use a lot I'm gonna get a lot of use out of Look what we just did oh my goodness well here it is here's a new trailer it is a 2020 rice car hauler 10k rated 82 inches wide 20 foot in length. The reason I went with this trailer, I'm going to go over a few aspects of this trailer and things that I liked and things that kind of drew me to it. A first thing is the adjustable tongue hitch connecting point there. Very adjustable as you can see it's got probably 12 inches of total adjustment. You've got the extra long you know cable for your wiring. You've got the 8,000 pound capacity crank which for me, obviously, well, not crank stand. Going to be pretty much pretty fine for what we do. I think most of our trucks, like even like this, you know, fourth gen, I think most of our trucks are just under that 8,000 pound range. They might be really close to it, but they're, I think they're under it. And the trailer itself is rated for 10,000 pounds. However, I think we're more in the 8,000 pound range, the most that we're going to be pulling with this thing. But the guy said, you can go with a 7,000 pound rated trailer. He's like, lots of guys overhaul with those. He's like, but I just wouldn't do it if I were you. He's like, I'm always that guy that's like, spend the 500 bucks more, get the trailer that's rated for 10,000 versus 7,000, just because you'd rather be a little bit more heavy duty when it comes to something like this than 
underweight and then uh, just overwork your trailer and suspension. So it's got the big tow hooks, I like that. And it's got this bump bar at the back, like, oops, whoop. It's got this bump bar at the back, which is nice for like, when you want to try to bring a truck all the way up to and you want to like want to pull the tires up against the back of the trailer if you do have a longer truck and you can chuck the tires back behind them to keep the truck like locked in place up towards the front of the trailer they had a lot of other trailers there that were just like flat all the way to the tongue and i just didn't like that idea you never know if you hit your brakes for some reason something's not strapped right and i'd rather the truck slide back off the trailer if something's not right versus slide into the back of the truck that i'm hauling with and cause a whole nother problem now you don't want either of those situations but i'd rather it be sliding back than having the ability for the truck to roll forward and you know just create an absolute catastrophe so lots of tie down points lots of tie down points along the side of the trailer plenty of points to connect and I, another thing I liked was how the ramps were hidden directly behind the trailer. There were a few other trailers there that were some of the cheaper stuff. And I don't know if this is considered like a nice trailer or not, but it seemed really nice to me compared to the other stuff that was sitting around that just looked kind of cheap. The ramps pull straight out the back like so. And what that allows you to do is just quickly pull them out, hook them on the back here because they just hook on this lip and then pull your vehicle onto the trailer versus a lot of these other ramps were kind of like tucked in on the sides here and tucked up in the front or just other weird stuff, which don't get me wrong, that's fine. As long as it still has the storage, it's fine. But for me, I'd rather have the ramps directly where I'm gonna be hooking them onto the trailer so it can be quick. Pull the ramp out, hook it on, and you hardly had to move it anywhere. Um, and then when you're done, slide it on in. And it's a very well fitted and very well designed system if you ask me. It's very simple, but very smart. In terms of your plate location, there's a plate location right down below there instead of like screwing it onto the fender, which is what most people do. And you're probably wondering, what about the width issue that you were talking about? And to be honest with you, I have an idea that I'm not sure is gonna be like a permanent solution but I do have an idea that I think is gonna work very well for what we're gonna do with this. And you guys can let me know if you think it's a good idea or not. I think it should work. I'm thinking about getting a bunch of really small, like one by tens, and hear me out. Getting a ton of one by tens and basically cutting them at a little bit longer length than this wheel well arch, and then slowly cutting them a little bit shorter until you get to about here, that way, you can pull the truck up, and most of the trucks we haul are all four-wheel drive. If you have to have it in four-wheel drive, so be it, but then just creep up over the fender without sitting on the fender, if it is a stanced out truck, like this fourth gen, then that way you can get up over the wheel well fenders of the trailer without putting all the weight down on them and crushing them and basically just destroying them because that would just not be cool. And that's not what they're for. They're not supposed to be weight bearing. They're just supposed to be there to protect the tires from stuff that's on the trailer so for the people that are wondering why not go with a gooseneck i for one know that goosenecks are supposed to be safer able to handle a lot more all that other stuff that's cool i just don't like the idea of my load being up an extra you know 10 12 inches higher than this just to me it's just i don't know i i think this will be just fine and another thing is if we absolutely had to and this is like last resort if we absolutely had to we could put this behind the Cadillac to pull one of our trucks if we had to do it. Again, not the objective, not the goal. We're not planning on doing that, but if we had to, we could do the rear end bumper pull, I guess you could say style um, hitch. We could do that with the Cadillac because it is rated for like 9,600 pounds. If we had to do it, we could. We've already done it with you know another truck and trailer that was a horrible trailer setup. It was only 16 footer and it did not haul very well. But if we had to use this, with a Cadillac, we could do that as well. And if we absolutely had to at some point haul a giveaway winner's truck to them, if they're within a close enough distance where we were up to doing that, we could do that now. And before, again, I don't have any trucks with gooseneck hitches in them other than I guess that first year now, but I never had any trucks with gooseneck hitches in them to use, so I couldn't really like borrow my dad's and use it. Not to mention, I like using my own equipment. That way, if anything were to go wrong, it's my equipment that I'm having to pay to fix or repair or anything. I don't like having the thought process of having to fix other people's stuff or possibly damaging other people's stuff. Um, so if we do want to end up hauling trucks to give away winners that are within a closer proximity, we can always offer that as well now. Pretty much going to put a wrap on this video. A lot of different little things happened today. I wasn't sure if I was going to do this or not, but I'm like, you know what? 
let's do it. Long term, we're not gonna regret having a trailer to haul all of our trucks, and I think it was just a purchase worthwhile. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for all the support. It really means a lot. If you want to win that first gen, the eighth is the last day to get your 10X entries for that truck. So on the eighth, it is your last full day to get 10X entries towards winning that truck. If you're seeing this on the seventh though, then tomorrow is your last day to get 10X entries. Anyways, guys, don't waste any time. Enter win that truck plus $5,000. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. Peace. Every $5 you spend gets you 10 entries to win this truck plus $5,000 cash. It's a 1989 W350 single rear wheel, five speed manual, four wheel drive, 12 valve Cummins with only 55,000 original miles on it. So if you want to take this baby home, go to lmpgear.com and get entered today.